Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm your host D-Day bringing you some more of my immersive engineering spotlight. So this episode specifically will be me showing you guys how to use the thermoelectric generator in immersive engineering in Minecraft 1.20 specifically. Uh, this will be your guide to how to get energy in immersive engineering or how to get power in immersive engineering, whichever way you want to call it. All right, so we got cold coke, we got creosote, we got treated wood, we got the uh, steel, we have slag, we have electrum, the alloy kiln, the engineer's workbench, we're growing hemp. Over here, this is a little bit of a teaser. We're going to be doing water wheels next episode. We did the current transformer and figured out how much RF the windmill actually has as a throughput. And today what we're going to do is the thermoelectric generator. This guy is actually severely underused in my Let's Plays, even though it is so easy to create. I always went with water wheels because we're running passive power. Water wheels out of these three options between windmill, water mill, or water wheel, and thermoelectric generator, the best bang for your buck, it is the water wheels. But if you have the materials, mainly steel, the copper coil blocks, which are the LV coil, which are the copper wires that we snip with the engineer's wire cutters from copper plates that we hammer from copper ingots with the engineer's hammer, and now Constantan. So this one is a new alloy that we have to work with. Last time we did the Electrum, and Electrum is going to be super important for future episodes as well, because the Electrum, we need that for the heavy engineering blocks. Constantan, now, on the other hand, it is an alloy of copper and nickel. So if we put copper and nickel inside the alloy kiln, we'll go ahead and we can start making us some constant tan. Boom, boom. And let's go. We can make some constant tan and then we can use our hammer, of course, to hammer out the plates. There's our constant tan. And let's go. Constant tan plates. There we go. Let's go ahead and make, I believe we only need six. Yep. Five and we can plus our first thermoelectric generator. Very, very cool. I'm actually super excited about this guy. Uh, there are some things you have to take into consideration though. The way the thermoelectric get generator makes power in immersive engineering. Let me get it really far away from the base, just for right now for this explanation. When you put it in the ground, let's go ahead and do this. We put it in the ground, it will gather energy based off of the temperature difference in fluids. So there is a big list in the wiki that you can see. One side needs to be hot, one side needs to be cool, and the difference between how hot and how cold the substances are is how much power it will generate in the middle. So let me go ahead and we can repurpose this guy over here. We'll grab the current transformer and we'll leave the rest up here because I am super curious. I want to see exactly how much it makes and not just rely off of the wiki. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to put our current transformer down here and let me grab the energy trash can. All right, so energy trash can, we'll put it over here and we will grab our LV wires. So on top of this guy, and we're gonna put one on top of this guy as well, like this. So we're connecting this cable to the current transformer here and this cable here. So the power goes through this unit into the trash can and it will show us, okay, cool. Average energy transferred over the last 20 ticks is zero flux per tick. So what we need is the first fluid for the thermoelectric generator. The hot is gonna be lava and the cold is going to be water. So let's go ahead and grab ourselves some lava. I know we have some lava over here and right there, yep, lava. And we can grab some water on the way. 
There's a little hidey hole. There we go. So the difference in power is going to be lava is hot on one side and water is cold on the other side. So let's see. It is now creating 14 redstone flux a tick. So 14 RF a tick. And then this is what I wanted to make sure you guys understand. Having open lava sources will light your wood on fire if it's close enough, right? We learned this <laughs> way back when, when I did, what was it, Sky Factory? And I was making the infinite cobble generators in my sky block. And I was foolish enough to put lava down and my base caught on fire in a sky block. That is terrible news. <laughs> but I have it far enough away right now. This wood will burn, you know, it'll burn down. The stone won't, but the wood will. And one really cool thing that I wanted to tell you guys about treated wood. Treated wood will not burn. It is not burnable. So I believe they took that into account. If you think about it, old school telephone poles, they're made out of treated wood. And, you know, you go camping or whatever, you're not supposed to burn any of that wood. One, because it doesn't burn very well. And two, because it's full of creosote oil and chemicals to weatherproof it and it's poisonous. So the lava is starting to melt the surrounding area of the snow. And I believe that is also the area where the little sparks you just saw can light wood on fire. So what I usually do is I surround my lava blocks with stone and uh, do trial and error right? I'm sure there's one guy out there or maybe a whole bunch that can tell me the exact block radius on lava being able to burn. I would love that. I would love that trivia if you guys want to school me on that. There's a seashell under that water block. That was cool. So we're going to try out one more thing, which I think is pretty cool. It is running at what now? It is running at 14. So we're also going to break this one and this one. And we're going to do the same thing. Opposite sides, right? So lava and water. And how much is it running now? 29 RF a tick. So this is pretty cool. We learned that the windmill can do, I believe it was 33, correct me if I'm wrong, with the kinetic dynamo, with the full sails and everything. This is passive power, so this won't stop unless you do something to change the setup with the windmill this guy right here one thermoelectric generator it runs at 29 rf a tick with the basic source of lava and water which i'm barely certain that we're inside of a cold bi biome right if it wasn't for the lava this water would freeze or the other way around as well. If we put down blocks of ice, the lava will turn the ice back into water. Ice and water both have the same temperature difference with lava. We would have to go pretty crazy with uh, gelid cryothium and blazing pyrothium to have uh, higher power levels come out of the thermoelectric generator. So I'm very happy we are running 29 off of one block or if you want to say it's a three by three by one, because you have to take these block faces into consideration for 29 flux a tick. It's smaller than the windmill would take up. Whoops. Accidentally shift click 39. Did not mean to do 39 for this example. What I wanted to show you guys, what I really like is you can expand these. So as long as you make sure the sides are still equal. So now we put down another thermoelectric generator. It's touching water, water. So then we need to break this one and we need to break this one. And these two need to be lava so that there's uh, opposite side with the cold. All right, so lava and lava. Now these are opposite with each other. They can share. So this water block is sharing this lava with that thermo and this lava with this thermo right here. So now in that area, this one is running 29, but this one is also running 29 RF a tick. 
man, I really didn't mean to shift click 38. I do that mistake a lot <laughs> in modded Minecraft a lot. So let's do this one right here. Uh, let's go ahead and pick up this lava block just to be safe. We'll put this guy down here and then we'll put the lava back, right? And then these guys, this guy needs to be lava and this guy needs to be water so that it's opposite. So opposite of the lava is water and opposite of this water here is lava. Okay, so even in here, this water block can do this thermo and that lava, this thermo, that lava, this thermo, and this lava as well. So as long as they cross. And then if you notice the pattern that's starting to come out is the water and the lava are going to be in diagonal alternating parallel lines. So there we go. The snow is starting to thaw. And this is a good grid right here of a three by three with thermoelectric generators. So we know now that one of these guys running basic lava and water is 29 RF a tick. So now that we have five of them, we are already over 100 RF a tick, which this little setup here, this is over 100 RF a tick. This is more than one of the three wheel water wheels that we're going to make next episode. So it's your choice. It is a little bit more material and a little bit more thought behind it. But space wise and RF wise, it's actually pretty good. Much respect to the thermoelectric generator. All right, guys. So I'm working on this idea for you guys. These are all insulated LV wire coils. We have the treated wood scaffolding going up the middle. And even though the treated wood scaffolding cannot burn, it still shows the animation for it burning. It just won't destroy the block. So if this bothers you, be sure to build the center column out of something that is not treated wood scaffolding. Maybe later make it out of steel scaffolding or make it out of stone for right now. I thought making it out of the treated wood would look cool with the aesthetic. Uh, I knew treated wood cannot burn, but I totally wasn't expecting it to still show the animation for it on fire. <laughs> but what I'm doing right now is I'm expanding the setup just a little bit so that each side of the face here can have a relay because relays can attach to multiple connectors but connectors can only attach at one point. So the relay has three connections right here and each of the connections only have one. So I have three on this side, three on this side, three here, and then I'm gonna put down another two here and connect these guys so that there's three here as well. Now we have all of these nine thermoelectric generators hooked up. And in the middle, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put down the LV accumulator that we put together. I hammered all the sides to be input. So this is really cool. The LV accumulator, when you break it and pick it up, it does retain memory of what you set all of the inputs as. So all of these six sides are set to input. So now what I need to do is all of this power needs to be input into this unit here. So since we're still running the LV wire relay and we have our insulated cables, now we can just connect it up to each of these sides like so. Now they're all connected into the same unit, all into the LV accumulator. And now we can hammer this side to orange for energy output and what we can do is we can attach our LV wire connector to the top. And now we can output the LV wire as one wire, but it is running nine of the thermoelectric generators. All right, so I cleaned this up a little bit and I changed out the treated wood so that it would stop getting caught on fire. Let's test this setup out. We have output on the top of the LV accumulator. We will connect up here and then of course connect to the trash can. And what are we running now? 
254 redstone flux are of a tick. So 254 with this setup here. And I think it looks pretty interesting to look at. There's a lot of aesthetic choices that can be made to change this guy around so that it looks even better. Like one thing that I was thinking about is moving this guy underground by like four or five blocks. That way the lava won't bother anyone, you know, and just having like a like an electricity pole building above this for for looks only where just the singular wire from the LV wire connector comes up through the top of the building. Either that, or we could build something around this as like a safety kind of situation. But I am a fan of this setup. This is something that uh, I've been meaning to implement into one of my mod packs that I've been playing. But you guys know when you're playing modded Minecraft, there's always going to be simpler, more efficient ways to do RF power generation. This is 200 plus RF a tick passive. But as you guys know, there's a bunch of easier ways to do power, especially when you have multiple mods to choose from. Since this is an immersive engineering mod spotlight, this is one of the ideas that I think is actually pretty cool. Thank you so much for joining me today. Smash like to show your appreciation and consider leaving a boom in the comment section below. Also, click on my dude here to subscribe for more Let's Plays. Ooh.